We're here in Orlando and I've got AIG traffic working. I'll tell you what I think of it and you'll get a chance to see it when we take off from Asobo's handcrafted Orlando and fly to Latin VFR's New Orleans. Let's hop into the pilot seat and get started. I have to give Asobo a hand. This looks like a payware airport. Nice job. Okay, before we get the CRJ all started up, I know you're dying to hear about AIG, so let's take a look. AIG is freeware, and it's a lot like world traffic for X-Plane. It injects real-world schedules and deliveries to all the airliners in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it'll be the right plane, it'll have the right livery, and it'll be at the right terminal. And it's free. It looks fantastic, uh, because not only are you getting everything corrected, but you're actually getting models with it. So uh, you're getting models that don't exist in the vanilla version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that's a big distinction. Aerosoft has simple traffic, which is payware, that does something similar, but it paints liveries on the existing generic aircraft models of Microsoft Flight Simulator. With AIG, airports come alive. They've got traffic that's based on pre-COVID flight schedules, and airports are packed and busy with aircraft taxing all over the place. So it's awesome. AIG advertises a one-click installer, but that's a bit of an overstatement uh, if you've seen some of the installation videos for it. Uh, installation isn't hard, but it is time consuming. I'll put a link to Pi and the Sky Tours installation video on YouTube, uh, which is short and sweet and tells you just the basics to get yourself going. Uh, really, the time consuming part just comes from downloading all of the liveries that you want. It's a lot like world traffic if you had world traffic for Explain, especially in the uh, early days of it when you had to go to assorted websites and download the liveries as bundles. Uh, so this is a little more streamlined, but you do have to either download the liveries one by one or you can somewhat do them in bulk, but you may not get all the liveries you want and then you'll still have to download some manually. Um, it can take five to ten minutes to download one because it has to download every single aircraft for that livery, uh, which is quite a lot. Uh, so multiply the amount of liveries by 10 minutes and you can easily spend a Saturday afternoon downloading. Once they're downloaded though, it's just an app that you run on startup. So you run it, forget about it, and it injects all the traffic. I haven't seen any FPS hit from it, so it's a keeper and it's free. All right, we will get our iPad on. We'll head to the overhead, turn on the battery. We'll make sure all of our switches are in the default position head down here, make sure our pedestal is configured correctly, get the emergency brake checked, do our fire test. The indicators come on along with the message on the ECAM. Go to the electrical page, make sure that we have enough voltage to start the APU, that looks good. Turn on the APU fuel. Have to toggle back over to status page. Make sure that the APU door is open, that looks good, and now we'll hit APU start. Then we just have to wait for it to spool up. Uh, as it does, or when it does, we'll see the other screens illuminate and the aircraft will come alive. I've added chapter bookmarks to my video, so if you've seen me start up the CRJ plenty of times and you want to skip the startup checks, feel free to advance to the pushback, taxi, or departure. And we're good. So we'll head down to our IRS, get the two switches to nav one, head back to the overhead, Get our nav light on. Check our hydraulics by switching switches 1, 2, and 3A on. Go down to the hydraulics screen. Verify that we have pressure. That looks good. Now we'll switch those same switches to auto and switch 2A to on. We'll verify that we have pressure through 2A and now go put 2A back to off. Get on the air conditioning, cargo air conditioning, Left, right, window, anti-ice, seat belts, no smoking, and emergency lights to armed. Go down and do our stall test. Verify the cockpit voice recorder is working by pressing the green button until the light illuminates. Over to the aircraft page, we'll open up all of the doors and get ready to board our passengers. Check our oxygen mask, looks good. Check the door cam, also looks good. For the next check, we'll need to turn off the parking brake. Head up to the center pedestal and flip our anti-skid off. Listen for the alarm and message. 
flip the uh, gear overheat tests on and the lamp test on. Get the reversers armed. Go to TCAS, put it into test mode. We'll get the parking brake back on. The test is complete. And now we can get ready to set up our comms. Normally I like to listen to the airport's real ATIS from liveatc.net, but MCO doesn't have one on liveatc.net, so we'll have to listen to the games to get the correct winds and runway in use. Orlando clearance, Delta 3556, IFR to New Orleans, ready to copy with information India. Cleared to New Orleans via the Lured 1 departure. Climb via the SID, maintain 7000, expect filed 10 minutes after departure. Departure 119.4, squawk 3414, Delta 3556. Okay, if I hop into Navigraph, we can do the pilot's brief. So we have a 565 nautical mile flight taking off from Orlando. I've got all my charts pinned at the bottom, so if we go down to the Lured 1 departure and overlay it, we can see our departure path. We've got four at or above waypoints to hit uh, before we settle down at 7,000 for our altitude. And that's going to take us westward, uh, out towards the ocean. If I click on my airport diagram, uh, you can see we are at Terminal uh, Airside 4, uh, which is where Delta parks. So we are expecting runway 35 left based on the ATIS. The departure takes us all the way west out over the ocean until we reach Remus. <laughs> it's coming. There it is. And then we get on our first airway, which is Q100. It's actually our only airway, so our departure dumps us on Q100, and Q100 is going to dump us to a arrival. So we follow Q100 until we get to Leeville, Lima Echo Victor, VOR, and that will begin OLED 4 star. So our star takes us out to the west before doubling back a little bit to the east uh, to get to OLED. So we've got the star overlaid here uh, on our flight path so that you can see it. This is one of the awesome features of Navigraph. Be sure to check out my video on the features of Navigraph uh, for some more details. We'll turn that off and then we can turn on the ILS. So we're expecting ILS for runway 11 uh, with the OLED transition and that's pretty straightforward. We've got one turn that lines us up with the localizer and then we're straight in along heading 016. Now I'll give you a spoiler, it didn't work out for this flight and I ended up landing on runway 2 and I'll tell you why in the wrap-up so be sure to stay tuned for that. Now we bring up the taxi diagram so if we were coming in on runway 11 as planned uh, our terminal is the north terminal, that's where Delta parks so we're going to be exiting on the left uh, to get to the north terminal. If AIG is working right, we should see some Delta deliveries there. Okay, we'll start with position on that. We'll put in our departure airport, and then we'll snag the GPS coordinates from the second page and paste them into the position on the first page and hit execute. And then the rest of it's just programming what I just said, so I won't take you through that all again. Uh, but the first page here, we're putting our departure arrival airports and our flight number. And then I like to go in the order that I'm flying. So after we get this entered, we'll head to the departure arrival page by hitting the departure arrival button. Select our departure runway, which will be 35. And our uh, SID, which is Lured 1. Then we can head to the flight plan page and put in our waypoints. Uh, airways go on the left and waypoints go on the right. Then back to the departure arrival page, go to the arrivals and we'll put in our star, our arriving uh, runway, and our transition. Once you're done with this, you just go to the legs page and leaf through it all to make sure that it looks right and look for any discontinuities. They usually occur uh, where you have transitions. So you just copy and paste over those to uh, get the waypoints correct. Actually, I like programming the CDU. 
The Aerosoft CRJ is not linked to the flight planning screen in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so if you put a flight plan in there, it does not import into the CDU. You still have to program it yourself. There are ways to import directly from SimBrief. However, I kind of like it. I bought the aircraft because I wanted all the buttons to work, and I want to press all the buttons. Next, it's setting preferences on the MCDU menu. This is just what's going to appear on your main display. Then we'll go to Perfinit, put in our flight level. Uh, for us, it's 320 for this flight. And then we'll import the performance settings from the performance tab here. It's a little bit quicker than typing it all in. There's a takeoff trim calculator on the iPad, so I'll put this to status display. Takeoff trim is on the right display and I'll use my flight control to set it. In this case, it's 7.2. The SID has an altitude and a heading, so we will enter those on the MCP now. So those are all set up. Once we're above 600 feet on departure, then we'll kick in the autopilot, put it into heading mode and speed mode uh, with it climbing up to our set altitude. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. We'll verify that on the doors page. Looks good. Back to the overhead, we'll get our boost pumps on and our beacon and prep for pushback whilst we'll get our hydraulic pump 2A on. This is ground, stand by. Okay, sir, the bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed and all ground and report to the route. Standing by for pushback. We are cleared for start and push. Parking brake set. Okay, cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. There's a you chronometer over here, sequence. so we'll hit start to record the time of engine start and get engine number two started up. We're going to watch N2 until it's 20%. Once it's at 20%, we'll flip the red lever up to unlock the throttle on the right and bring it up to idle. Get engine number one started up. Okay, sir. Clear to disconnect. Pin has been removed. See you at the side. Have a good flight. Holding position waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. Morning ground, Spirit Wings, uh, 1473. We pushed off of 828 taxi with Alpha. Orlando ground, Delta 3556, taxi with India. Taxi and hold short, runway 35 left via Hotel 3, Hotel Delta 3556. Release our parking brake. And we're good. All right, get your peepers ready for some plane spotting with AIG. We'll see how it looks as we uh, taxi around the airport here. So right off the bat, straight ahead, you can see a tail uh, moving down the taxiway there. So we've got aircraft taxiing around. The, <laughs> it's awesome, the airport's alive. So if you play with live traffic, uh, you know that uh, there's not a lot of live traffic. It's gotten better with the last sim update, but for the longest time, um, airports were ghost towns. So look at that. Woohoo! <laughs> oh boy, just the joy that correct liveries uh, bring on correct aircraft models is hard to state. If you like flying airliners, you want the whole airport simulation, and seeing stuff like this brings a joy to my heart. Holding position, Delta 3556. Traffic! I actually had to hold for traffic. <laughs> awesome, huh? There he goes. He's heading off onto a different runway. All right, we are number two. Look at that, we got somebody landing over there. Okay, we're gonna hold back here as he gets all set up. Fuel cross flow to manual, get all of our lights on. Orlando Tower, Delta 3556, holding short, runway 35 left. 
cleared for departure, runway 35 left, Delta 3556. Okay guys, I think I've got the replay camera sort of working, so get ready for some takeoff eye candy. Get our autopilot on. As we progress through the flight, I'll overlay Navigraph charts so you can see where we are. So here we are working our way through the departure. We're looking good. Let's sit back and enjoy that awesome flight simulator scenery.
All right, so AIG is a keeper. It really adds something to the airport, and it's free. All it takes is a little bit of your time to get it set up once, and then you can forget about it. So the problem I had with this flight uh, was my payware report. Uh, the ILS for runway 11 for New Orleans doesn't work. Um, <laughs> it took, took me a couple tries to figure that out. When I figured it out and went back to review my recording, I discovered that unbeknownst to me, my recording software had locked up halfway through my flight, so <laughs> I lost the entire second half of the flight anyway and had to do it again. I always like to run with live weather, and the weather was for runway two when I did it the second time, so that's how I ended up on runway two. Oh well. So if you enjoy content like this, be sure to click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me and stay tuned for further flight adventures.